JP here for my point of view on Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Brothers debuted on Xbox Live Arcade on August 7th. It was later released for PC on Steam and PlayStation Network and is available on all three platforms for $15. Now, Swedish developer Starbreeze have had a great summer so far, first with Payday 2 and now with Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. So what kind of game is this? Uh, Brothers is a story-driven adventure game which might honestly drive some people away. But, but before you leave, don't leave. Stay with me. The gameplay is quite good. The story is amazing. And the graphics, the art style are just superb. We'll get to all of that in just a minute. You should know that you have to play this game with a controller. You cannot play it with a keyboard. And simply, it would be impossible with a keyboard. And that is because the control scheme is set up so that you control two characters at once with a total of four buttons, which is just enough to not completely mess with your head, but it still does from time to time. We'll, we'll kind of sort that out in a bit. In terms of options, there really aren't much. There's no subtitles, which is fine because the characters are basically speaking gibberish. And there's really no graphic options other than resolution and V-Sync, which are done in the game's launcher. If you're in the actual game, you can only mess with the gamma. And the music volume and the sound effects volume, and that's it. Um, which, you know, I kind of wanted more, but for what this game is, I'm fine with it. This game's about three to four hours long. I completed it in one sitting, simply because I was hooked. Um, but I, I wanted to see what the next environment is going to look like. What you're seeing right here is basically the game. This is not uh, anything crazy. This is what happens and this is what the game looks like. We're going to jump into a chapter here, but I'm not going to show you uh, really too much because the game's really about the journey and it can be completed, like I said, in a little over three hours if you're rushing through it. There are a couple of uh, side things that you can do um, which kind of take more time. But let, let's jump into the uh, game here. Uh, the game's, I think, seven chapters long, and there is an epilogue. So you can play through that in about, like I said, three hours. Yes, let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to go into chapter four, which is about, I'd say, hour, maybe two hours into the game. And I don't want to really talk about what's happened, because the story is an important part of the fact, but... The, the control scheme in this game is incredibly well thought out throughout the entire game. You control both these two people here, these brothers, at the same time. There's four buttons total in the entire game. The left stick and the left trigger control the brother in the blue. And the right trigger and the right stick control the tiny brother in the, I guess that's kind of an orange, a brown, maybe an orangish brown. And there's really, uh, it's kind of crazy because you can move them both independently like you're seeing here. And it, it, every now and then I'll find myself being like really fucking confused and it only happens if they cross stream. I found myself throughout the entire game actually having the little brother on the right and the left brother, or sorry, the taller brother on the left. And it's just how I tended to play. You can rotate the camera. Uh, full 360 degrees that does do the left bumper and uh, right bumper to do that. And I found myself actually doing this a lot uh, because I enjoyed the scenery in this game more than anything. So let's jump up on this cliff here. I'm not going to show... We'll show maybe 10 minutes max of this gameplay. Uh, so, you can, oh, so you can see there the brothers switched. Uh, this is a little side thing. I don't want to solve this much, but... That guy's trying to hang himself. So you can interact with this. Wait, get off. You gotta save him. Oh god, I guess he's gonna die. Oh, okay. I did not do this during my playthrough. So I guess I am gonna solve this. I just saved this man's life. What are you doing, you crazy guy? 
I'm doing this by holding down the left trigger, by the way. You can do that to interact with people. What a sad soul. What a sad soul. So throughout the game, you, in, in situations like that, you'll find yourself holding down left trigger to do like I was... Oh, it's hard to talk and, and move at the same time. I was holding down left trigger to hold that guy up, and then with the right trigger held down, the guy, the little brother, climbed his way up and uh, made his way to save that guy. So basically climbing up this mountain. Only the big brother can interact with these large pools. The little brother can actually make his way through bars like that. Big brother cannot, so they each have their own little thing. This game has a lot of different puzzle aspects to it. You can see one right here. This is a little jumping puzzle. A lot of, lot of this in the game. I had to let go and then re... Uh, I guess re-pull down on the right trigger for that to work. And I'm still holding left trigger this entire time. So it, it does have kind of fun little elements like that. Uh, so here we go doing this. And the only reason I'm describing this to you is because the control scheme is very unique. That's uh, rotating the right control stick. Then I'm going to let go of the left one. And we have ourselves a bridge. There's a lot of different little things like that throughout the game. Most of them are different in some aspects. You never really saw yourself, or at least I never really saw myself doing it too many times. Nope, I gotta get my brother, the little brother on the right hand side here because it is so confusing. But you get little glimpses as well throughout the levels uh, with these. And these are just little benches. You can go up and interact with them. Have both brothers sit down. Kind of zooms out. Shows you what is uh, coming up later, perhaps. A little foreshadowing that uh, we may... You may end up at that castle, you might not. And towards the end of the game, I think, is where it really becomes graphically just super, super impressive. Um, the game is not one to... How to, What's the best way to say this? The game explores non... not real things if that makes sense. Kind of folktale or um, magical shit, stuff like that. And, and it really shows uh, up great and looks great. The music in this game is also superb. I'm not sure if we'll get to see too much of that. This is a theme that's uh, coming up quite a lot. Dolly. Hear the gibberish there. I, I believe it's gibberish. Um, I do not believe it's another language. Hopefully I'm not being a uh, piece of shit by saying that. So we got to climb our way up the mountain. And we cannot make this jump. So why not take a goat? push this uh, bridge out of the way. Go up and interact with that. <laughs> now I'm controlling both of these at the same time. Which you kind of notice can be troublesome. But it's not too bad. And, and I think a lot of people might be turned away from that. Look, it, I'm not like talented at this. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to. Oh boy, I crossed the streams. Especially if you're talking, it can be uh, quite quite annoying, but it's really not bad at all. It, it's it's very well done, and, and there are... The control scheme kind of matches the thematic elements in the game from time to time as well, which is just super smart. Um, sometimes it takes a second to figure out really what the hell's going on when, it, when that happens, because it... There's no prompts. There, there's no press left button to interact with this. It's all just kind of like looking at the uh, looking at the world and, and trying to figure out what is really going on. Um, I do also want to stress that this is not a hard game. If you're looking for a challenge, if you're looking for a um, 
kind of a thinking man's puzzle game or adventure game, this is not one. Uh, in fact, the game, I, I never quote unquote died. I didn't even know you could die until I basically forced myself to uh, after completing the game, uh, just because I want to see how it would work. So if you're looking for something that's challenging, this is not going to be your game. No. Oh, that works. I didn't know you could do that. I thought you had to catch it. Oh, boy. Here's here's one of those moments where I have to think about what I'm controlling. We'll show this uh, next little segment, which is coming up. Shit. Can I throw this across? Okay, I guess I got to get a brother over there. And then uh, we will call it a JPOV, because, uh, like I said, I don't want to give too much away. Oops. I had to catch that by holding down the right trigger. We'll place that over here. Got to raise this man up. You can see up there in the top right-hand corner that fun is about to occur. And I will probably uh, pause the game instead of just letting it come to a halt pretty soon. Very charming game. You can uh, interact with the environment by things like this. Just kind of look around. See some different things. And uh, now let's go hang gliding. Because this is an awesome scene from the game. And here we go. <laughs> now I'm using, of course, the two brothers here. I'm controlling them to sway over to the left side a little bit more. And there are many moments in the game like this where I actually almost messed up because I was so interested in what the game was showing me than uh, what I was actually supposed to be doing, which was kind of balancing these two to uh, make my left and right turns. There's no HUD in the game at all. In fact, this is uh, there's zero HUD, which is brilliant. I, I think it's a, a great decision uh, by Starbreeze to not include a HUD because it's just a gorgeous looking game. There's scenes like this where birds fly up, shit goes bad, and there's a castle in front of you. I think we're uh, gonna go ahead and get to uh, the end of this flight, and uh, we'll call it a JPOV and I'll give my final thoughts. But what a game! Um, I, I think that a lot of people will have concerns of a $15 price point for a game that can be completed in three hours. And if that is a little bit too steep, I'm sure this game will be on sale during a Steam Summer Sale at one point if you're going to play it on the PC. Some other concerns, uh, I do know that I had a... I think there was a total of three or four graphical errors, glitches in this game. And I'm not sure if that's specific to NVIDIA or if it's, uh, eight, uh, th that's what I use. I, so I'm not sure what was really causing it. But uh, every now and then there would be just a full on shadow of something that would eventually appear there. It was just like a character model that was completely black. And it did kind of spoil something towards the end of the game for me. So that was kind of upsetting. Um, but other than that, it, it was just, it's a great game, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go back to the main menu here, but that's Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. Like I said, it's available on PC, which is uh, through Steam, PSN for the PS3, and Xbox Live Arcade for the 360. $15 is the point of entry for this, and I will say, do not play this game if you are looking for 
and uplifting story. Um, this game does not... It, it has a... What's the best way to say this? It has a Game of Thrones type approach to story. I mean, you, it, it's kind of dark. You saw the fact that that guy was trying to hang himself. Um, there's a lot more thematic elements throughout the game that, that kind of have that same tone to them. And I think it's great. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. Um, I had it highly recommended to myself. And now I am highly recommending Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This has been JP McDaniel signing off. Thank you for watching another JPOV. We'll see you next time here. Thanks for watching.